Thank you for uh, choosing to view this first of probably three videos, about 15 minutes each, on bringing back the mid-70s Rockola jukeboxes to life. Uh, I am not a electronics person. I'm retired. Uh, I have picked this up as a hobby. I have purchased 10 of these machines, meaning Rockola's 453 to 474 mid-70s boxes that have the one, two, three digit selectors and have the 48350 amplifier in, in them. Um, these are good boxes and broken parts are the exception, not the rule. I think that you will be able to fix these boxes. I certainly have had good success with just a little persistence and some help from my brother Tom who does this full time. Uh, it's not uh, as tough as you would think. Um, we are going to try to cover the whole gamut here. There isn't much information out there on YouTube or uh, other sources to fix these boxes and there's even fewer guys who are fixing them. Uh, we're all getting older um, and if you can find someone to fix it, it's going to cost you. So. Why not give it a try? Um, we're going to cover how to purchase the box, how to bring it home, and the equipment you'll need to fix it. Uh, that'll take about the first five or six minutes. So if you already know that, have your box, you can fast forward to the more uh, um, detailed information on the actual repair. I'll go over then the, how I fix and adjust the mechanism, the sound system, the selector system, uh, the fluorescent lighting, and then at the end we'll go over 10 or 12 problems that are common to these boxes. And even if you did all the adjustments and cleaning that I will go over, there's still some issues that come up, some common themes that you should be aware of. So uh, let's get started. I want to just say a couple words about purchasing these boxes. These are plentiful and um, if it's not working, and complete and cosmetically good, that's what you want to go for. Um, cosmetics are more important than whether the box works in most cases, uh, simply because no one is replacing or reproducing the uh, plastics or glass or broken external parts that, are, that occur not infrequently. So it's better to get a box that looks nice and is complete than one that works. Uh, if it works, that is nice, but to be honest, even if it's working and if, if it hasn't been serviced for 10 years, you're going to end up doing all these adjustments and contact cleaning that I'm going to go over anyway, so uh, you'll get a better deal if it, if it doesn't work. Um, a few things I would caution you about. Uh, I would not buy a box that's been in a flood or a fire. Uh, if you're able to look at the box in person, certainly look for broken parts internally. Check the fuses on the amplifier to be sure they're not um, burn out or, or missing. Uh, and just give it a, a, a once over uh, if you can. If you're buying online uh, through Facebook, uh, again, try to determine if it's complete uh, and whether the current owner has ever seen it work. Um, it's, it's a good story if they it was in a family and, and it worked for years and then they moved it to another room and now it doesn't work. That's the cut type of box you want to seek out. Or one that they haven't played for 10 years and then they went to plug it in and it won't select a record. Um, those, are the, those are the good stories, the fixable stories. Whereas if you get one out of a warehouse that may or may not have had parts scavenged in the past and you're not going to know that, uh, you, you can get in trouble. So buy cosmetically nice boxes that are complete. That's enough said. Now, as far as transporting the boxes, uh, there are three uh, areas that I wanted to discuss, and we're going to look at these right now. I'm going to go over to the machine and uh, show you. Okay, first of all, if you have a nicer box like a 454, 460, 464 that has nice glass and plastics on the front, I would take the front door off before I transported it. Gosh, it's only two connections down there plus this uh, chain. Uh, very simple. And then put that in the back seat of your truck. 
um, and, and protect it so it doesn't get damaged during transit. And it'll make it easier to move. It takes about 50 pounds of weight off. Now, as far as the inside, you want to, at the minimum, tighten down the two of the four springs here on the front. There's a, a screw on the bottom. This basically floats the whole mechanism, so make sure it's secured at least with the two front screws. I would also take off the turntable that can come loose and damage things. And then the last thing you want to do is, there's a toggle switch here, you'll all be familiar with this, operate uh, off and scan. Um, put it into scan and take it off the home position, which is the area where the gap is between the two records. Just take it off the home position a couple notches. This will protect the little alternating dog down there from damage. I don't want to get into details. We'll talk about that later, but please do this. Now, if it isn't working and it has no power, you'll have to do this yourself. And there's a knob on the uh, 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 magazine motor that you just have to turn. And this will turn the uh, um, <clears throat> magazine a couple notches off the uh, home position. So, but it's, you have to reach underneath and grab it. It's a little more involved. Um, and then the last thing, sometimes I will remove the uh, tone arm uh, pickup and the ground wire and take the amplifier out and protect it. Um, the amplifier is your most valuable component of the jukebox. And if you're gonna go over rough roads and bang it around, I like to protect it on a soft car seat rather than the bed of the truck, but that's optional. You don't have to do that. Okay. Okay, what do you need to do a decent repair job and refurbishing on these jukeboxes? Well, certainly you need a service manual. This happens to be to the 453, 454, but um, uh, tr try to choose a manual that's at least close to the model you're, you're purchasing or, um, the, the internal components are fairly uh, similar, so any man, if you can't get the exact one, the next best next year or the year before will probably be good. But you can't successfully refurbish these boxes without a manual. Get one. Um, you also need a um, a multimeter. Um, they all have the diode checker on them now. Um, you'll need this for continuity checks. It's invaluable. You'll also need a soldering iron for the uh, for the uh, um, amplifier, and I would get one with a tapered tip and a, uh, uh, a variable temperature probe. Um, uh, that's I, I think, uh, and they're around forty-five bucks. You'll also need a heat gun, or if if you have to, you can use a hair dryer for heating the mechanism to try to unloosen or um, free up the uh, years of uh, of grease that have uh, oftentimes uh, clogged these and bound, bind, uh, bound up these uh, mechanisms. And then a, a variable power, power supply is nice. And this is the cheapo way to go. This is just a step down transformer from 120 volts to, to 24 volts. And then I put a um, bridge rectifier in there um, to change it to DC so I can check both the gripper and the uh, magazine motors. The um, Right-in motor is 25 volts AC, so that will lend itself to being uh, tested with this as well. Um, I don't think you need to get any more elaborate with that. You, you want a 24 volt supply to check the motors, and this should be sufficient. And then as far as tools, it's just the basic stuff. Ratchet sets, the pliers, wire strippers, wire cutters, a pickup uh, with... Um, 600 sandpaper to do your cleaning of the contacts and uh, and then just the basic stuff yeah I, I use CRC contact cleaner this is the oil you want to use for the the three in one engineer for the one quarter horsepower motors it's the blue can uh, uh, you could use the black can too but most most folks use this okay now let's go on now to getting started with uh, the uh, dismantling and uh, uh, fixing of our jukebox. I always start with the mechanism of the box. I want to be sure that there are no broken components before I go further. So we will remove the mechanism. 
if you haven't already, take the tone arm uh, cartridge wire and the ground plug off. And there are six connections down below that need to be um, unconnected, disconnected. There are four on the right and there are two on the left here. These are the light sequencer uh, uh, plugs. Um, there are four lock nuts on top of these springs that need to be removed and the nuts released. Those are in the four corners. And then to make things easier, uh, I often remove this front bar. And since you're going to be working on the amplifier and the uh, power supply, I remove those as well to allow a little extra clearance to get the mechanism out. Uh, it's ideally a two-person job, but one person can do it if you remove enough um, of the components to clear your way. Uh, the only thing you want to be careful about damaging would be the wobble plate switch there, and certainly the readout arms um, both on both sides uh, uh, would be uh, subject to damage, so be careful. But get the uh, mechanism on the uh, um, horses here, and then basically the, the three most important things will be cleaning all the circuit boards and the contact wipers, freeing up the gripper bow to be sure the, uh, it cycles well. It's usually bound up and needs uh, lubrication, a heat gun. And then the third thing, and I'll show you um, when we move the uh, mechanism to the, um, the ground, uh, we'll look at the alternating dog underneath and you must be sure that's well lubricated and flows uh, moves freely through the two tracks so that the uh, records, uh, both sides of the records can be chosen. Um, this is the um, popularity meter. It's not of too much importance. So actually we end up putting a board here and we lay the mechanism on the ground on a, on a pillow on this side because this is not as uh, uh, vulnerable to uh, uh, damage and allows you good visibility. I elected to put the mechanism on the floor because the first thing you need to do before you work on the gripper bow or the magazine it is to remove or loosen the, the motors underneath. And yes, you probably should just crawl underneath, but it would be hard to do a video with me crawling under the neck. So I just put it on its front. Uh, I'm careful to, I don't, you don't have to do this, but at least I'm careful to not damage any of the cables, the readout arms um, and the uh, wobble plate switch. But at any rate, you want to undo the screws here and this will loosen the, this is the uh, magazine motor. You want to disengage it from the gear so that you can move the magazine freely. And I want you to see while we're here, this alternating dog, I loosened it. Um, this little dog has to be completely um, fr free of friction. You've got to lubricate it and make sure it spins around easily because if it binds, you won't be able to go from one uh, track to the other. There's a I'll try to show you here the, uh, it doesn't visualize well, but this has to go between the uh, two uh, tracks, the uh, non-hit side and the hit side record. And it, to do that, it has to navigate up and over and then down and through. And if it isn't um, lubricated, uh, it's, it's not going to do that and you're gonna j jam up. Um, so, and then I showed you uh, if if you had to move the either motor manually, this is the um, uh, <clears throat> knob you use to uh, move the either the gri gripper assembly or the magazine motor. Uh, while we're down here, this is the right in motor. Uh, it's AC. It doesn't usually go bad. Uh, and then of course we have the circuit boards, uh, which we'll talk about. I'm going to end the part one and we'll go to part two shortly.